Good afternoon and welcome to our 22nd session of OBS, our online Bible study. And we are now on our 22nd uh, session. And again, let me just remind every one of you that this study is for a review or for us to be refreshed with why we believe what we believe and that the pervading and the prevailing principle of all of these studies that we need to read the Bible for all it's worth. Okay? Again, I would like to thank everyone who has been watching our videos, everyone who has been sharing it, posting it in their own personal uh, Facebook pages, in the churches, and using it to teach others. If this ministry or the videos that you've been watching is a source of blessing to you please share it to others also and be a channel of blessing again I would like to thank you for being my ministry partners never thought that we could reach out for a lot of people having this online Bible study we are now on our fourth session with the Gospel of John. Exciting yan, ano? Uh, nakakatuwa yan na nasa pang-apat na na session tayo. Alam nyo, ang dami kong gustong ituro sa, sa Gospel ni John. Ang dami magaganda talaga. Yet, um, ilimit lang natin. Baka makalimutan ko, nagtuturo ako ng Johanna ni Pizzles. At hindi tayo nagsisurvey. So, let me just uh, deal with the last chapter this time of John, because I think we, um, the, the author, can prove with the things that we have just discussed, the purpose of the book can be established with that. Again, let us remember while studying the book of John that the central theme of John, the main purpose of John is for us to make us believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing in Him, we might have life through His name. And He wanted so much to show us that Jesus is indeed fully human and fully divine. When I said fully human, that He insisted <coughs> that the Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, that the same word became flesh and that he insisted that Jesus is also fully divine because the word was God the word from the very beginning was God and all of us readers are confronted by John either to accept his testimony either to accept these things, the claims of Jesus, who he is, or the writers claim who Jesus is. And um, we need to be doing these things uh, too big. Okay, uh, excuse us for that. So, let me just go on. In John chapter 20, I believe that this should have been the conclusion of the Gospel of John. In chapter 20, John talked about the resurrection and that the resurrected Christ appeared to Mary Magdalene. Then he appeared also to the disciples. Then he appeared to Thomas. We will be dealing with this a little bit. Chapter 20 verse 24, we could read that. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, 
unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and the play and place my fingers into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Thomas, by circumstances, was not there when Jesus showed the disciples, even when the door was, the room was closed, Jesus appeared in their middle. And Jesus showed the disciples the marks on his hands, not on the palm, but on this, the wrists. And then he even showed them his side. Yet this time Thomas is claiming, if I cannot put my, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, shown, place my fingers into the mark of those nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Sounds familiar. Eight days later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, the same thing, just like the first appearance, Jesus came and stood among them, and the same thing, he said, peace be with you. And immediately, he confronted Thomas, and then he said to Thomas, Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, and put your hand and place it in my side. Do not be disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. What an ideal place to end the Gospel of John. Ideal place to close the Gospel for two reasons. One, Thomas, being the doubter, has asserted that Jesus is indeed his Lord and his God. From doubting, he became a believer. Others who don't believe that Jesus is fully divine, would argue that Thomas was just shocked. Or, nagulat lang daw si Thomas, kaya napasigaw siya ng Panginoon ko at Diyos ko. Kagaya na nakakita ka ng ahas, sasabihin mong Diyos ko, hindi daw pwedeng yung ahas magiging Diyos mo. Just because of the punctuation marks. Marami pong argumento doon. Pero, Kung babasahin po natin maigi ang Biblia at gusto mo lang talagang basahin ang Biblia for all its worth, makikita mo that indeed, Thomas, noong unang-una pa lang in-establish na ni, ni John that wala siya noong unang magpakita ang Panginoon. Tapos yung sinasabi niyang unless may lagay ko yung aking, aking daliri at may lagay ko yung aking kamay sa kanyang tagiliran, those have been answered. So, walang magagawa si Thomas kundi manampalataya, maniwala na kagaya ng mga other disciples or other apostles. Kaya, nung sabi niya, my Lord and my God, that is a proclamation of faith. Yan ay talagang, yan ang matagal niyang pinag-isipan na nagdududa siya. Pero this time, naalis ang lahat-lahat ng pagdududa niya, pagdadalawang isip. And this time, it has been affirmed. Kaya ang sabi niya ay, My Lord and my God, Panginoon ko at Diyos ko at hindi nagulat si Tomas. Not unless na magpakita ang Panginoon Jesus, napasigaw siya ng Panginoon ko at Diyos ko, but it took some time. Ang sabi ng Panginoon Jesus ay, Peace be with you. So, wala nang gulat doon. Kasi sinabihan ka na. And then, lumapit siya kay Tomas, at ang sabi niya kay Tomas, Tomas, ilagay mo ang yung daliri dito sa bakas ng aking uh, kamay and then ang yung kamay sa aking tagiliran. So, walang bahid ng pagkagulat sa mga bagay-bagay na ito kundi bagpos ay isang patutuo. 
So napakaganda ng place sana na tapusin ang isang ebanghelyo na talaga namang napaka-philosophical. The assertion from a doubt is saying, My Lord and my God, naistamis na sana kagad-agad doon, pati itong purpose ng book, that by believing you may have life in His name. Yun ang kanyang adhikain. Kung si Tomas nga, na hindi mananampalataya, si Tomas nga na may pagdadalawang isip, was convinced, then how much more tayo? And yet, kailangan marinig din natin yung isa. When Jesus said, mas blessed pala tayo, that we believe we are more blessed than Thomas, we are more blessed than those who have seen his riven side, and who have seen yung butas ng kanyang mga kamay, we are better. Kasi we can believe by just reading it, by just understanding these things. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. And I do believe, and I do proclaim that indeed Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Assuring myself of that life in His name. Now, let's go over to chapter 21. Para matapos na po tayo. And then we could move probably with Acts. Magawa na po tayo next week. The, the second book of the physician, Dr. Lucas. Luke. Now, chapter 21. Well, I was still in the Bible school. I asserted this. And... I told my professors that I believe that 21 was written to address a specific need. Being the last gospel written, if you will accept that the second, the later writing, not the early writing um, theory, that at the close of the century, they have heard a lot of things how some of the apostles been murdered, martyred, how the word is being spread. And John, the surviving among the twelve, must have heard it somewhere. A lot of people were asking about Peter, questions about Peter. And so, they were asking, what happened to that disciple who denied Jesus? What happened to the leader of the pack? What happened to him? And then, by history, we know from tradition that Peter was crucified upside down. Because he said he was not worthy to die like his master. So when he crucified, or when they crucified him, he said, I'm not worthy to die like my master. So they crucified him upside down. Ang kanyang mga paa nasa taas, ang kanyang ulo nasa baba. So nakabalintuan si, si Apostol Pedro nung siya ay ibitay sa cross. Isa pa sa mga katanungan noon ay, napatawad ba ng Panginoong Jesus yung pagkakailan niya? He denied him how many times? Three times before tumilaok ang manok. Anong ginawa? Was he ever reinstated as a paso? Yan ang mga katanungan. Kasi, the thing is, Nakikilala si Pedro. May isa pang sinulat si Pedro. Uh, first and second Peter. Sumulat pa ng episode si, si Apostol Pedro. So I believe chapter 21, idinagdag na lang yan ni John to address this specific need. Be that as it may. Tatawanan mga, mga professors ko noon. Nagtatawanan mga teachers ko. And sasabihin, okay, may wait. Sige, this and that. But, tingnan natin. If you've got your Bibles with you, 
be with me in chapter 21 and let's start with verse 1. After this, lahat ng mga bagay-bagay after the appearing, 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 Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, appeared to the disciples, and appeared to the disciples again with Thomas present. This time, matapos ang mga yan, parang may lal. There's, there is a lal in there. There's no walang activity. Gaano. Uh, life is not designed with the disciples and the apostles. For three years, they wake up with Jesus and they move around. They wake up, they sleep with Jesus, and then the following day, they have these things. But after the resurrection of Jesus, they are hiding from the Jews. They don't come into open. And they must be lost, somewhat lost. Um, wala na sa kanilang nakasanayan na routine. So this time, let's read 21 verse 1. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed it this way. Pakita na naman ang Panginoon Jesus sa ganitong kaparaan. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, and then siya, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two others, of his disciples were together. Itong tat, pitong ito, habang magkakasama sila, they were there. And so, Simon Peter, dahil nasira na yung kanilang routine, nasira na yung kanilang nakasanayan for the past three years, Peter wanted to go back to his old way. Fisherman siya, babalik na siya sa pangingisda. Hindi na tuloy yung yung iniisip nila na magtatatag ng kaharian dito sa, sa lupa. So, gusto niya balikan yung kanya nakaraan. So, he said, I am going fishing. And the six said, we will go with you. Maliit lang po yung boat, nabit-bit nila, hindi yung malaki talaga. And they went out and got into the boat, but that night, magdamag sila, that night, they caught nothing. Nada. Zilp. Zero. Wala talaga silang nahuli. How frustrating would, would it be? Gaano kaya ka-frustrating sa isang tumanda na fisherman na kagaya ni Peter? Sa magdamag na baba, ahon, tapon, baba, they must have been exhausted. At siguro may init ang mga ulo ng mga ito because they have caught nothing. Maybe they're thinking, I'm losing my touch. Hindi na ako siguro hiyang nakalimutan ko for the past three years. I haven't thrown my net. So I must have forgotten how to do this. And probably, uh, Andrew tried it. James tried it. John tried it. And every one of them, the seven of them tried it. Yet they got nothing the whole night. At the break of dawn, just as the day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? And they answered, No. Kakatawa, no? Uh, walang asin. He said, no. None. Wala eh. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Deja vu. Ba? Nangyari na yan ah. One time, Peter didn't catch anything. Tapos, ang sabi ng Panginoon Jesus sa kanya, throw it. Apo sabi niya, magdamag na kami ng isda, wala talaga eh. Yet this time, they cast it. And now they were not able to hold it in because of the quantity of fish. Flashback. Nung nag-uumpisa sila sa ministry o nag-uumpisa silang tinawag bilang mga disciples, Nangyari na ito. 
Siguro may mga flashback sila. Peter, James, John, Andrew, may mga flashback sila. Nangyari na ito noon yung miraculous catch of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, itong writer natin, itong author natin, said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, kasi nakahubad siya, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. Hindi na siya tumulong na iangat ang lambat, hindi na siya tumulong na iahon pa yung nahuli nila, basta tumalun siya, and then pumunta na siya sa pampang. He threw himself into the sea, and straight away pumunta siya sa pampang. The other disciples, yung anim, na natili sa boat, and they dragged the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards. Isang football field lang, malapit na lang. So, they brought in, binitbit nila, binitbit, hinila nila ang net. When they got on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. Sa mga hindi pa po nakakaalam, ang fish na ito ay tilapia. Yan po ang, ang tawag natin doon sa, sa fish, tawag ng ilan sa fish ay St. Peter's Fish. Pero tilapia po ito. Uh, kung anong tilapia na kinakain natin dito, yan po ang tilapia na yan. Ganyan po na, na uri. Okay? So at least we understand that. But here's the second DJ mo para kay, kay Peter. Nung makita ni Peter yung charcoal fire burning, naalala niya, malamang may flashback din si, si Peter. Dahil noong gabi, na hinuli ang Panginoong Yesus, malamig, maginaw. At marami doon kung saan yun yung nag-deny siya ulit. Gusto niyang magkaroon ng counting in it. There was this code kung saan nila nilalagay para mainitan sila. That's another one. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So, nung sabihin sa kanila, magdala kayo dito ng mga nahuli ninyo. Again, ang first and foremost, yung leader ng, ng grupo, leader of the pack, So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Hindi bumigay. Hindi na puni. Napakaraming isda. And Jesus said to them, to his apostles, to his disciples, Come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Because they know ang Panginoon niya ito. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and so with the fish. May mga naalala naman sila. Nangyari na sa atin ito. Nangyari na ito. Maalala niyo yung two fish and the bread. Pibinigay niya. And they ate. Then John inserted this. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. It must have been an awkward moment for Peter. Ang dami naglalaro sa isipan niya, miraculous catch of fish, yung coal burning. Marami naglalaro na sa isipan ni Pedro, maraming mga flashbacks na sa isipan ni Pedro. Let's move on. Matapos ang breakfast, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? More than this? More than this fishing? More than this this thing na binalikan mo? Do you love me more than sa pangingisda? Do you love me more than doon sa source ng income mo? Do you love me more than this? Yung pagiging nakikita mo yung self-fulfillment mo because of being 
a fisherman and you are good at it. Do you love me more than that? He said to him, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Wala na yung pagmamayabang, ano? Noong unang sabi niya, Peter, hindi lilipas sa magdamag. Bago tumilawag ang manok, he will deny me thrice. At ang sabi niya, mamatay na lahat-lahat, mamatay man ako, I will never forsake you, I will never deny you. Ito hindi na. Here is a Peter na mas malumanin na. At ang sabi niya, yes Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Just like you're feeding your brothers now, you're feeding your fellow disciples now, he said, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, pangalawa na, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Personalan na, no? The first one was, do you love me more than this? Yung source ng self-fulfillment mo. Yung source, yung kung saan ka magaling. This time is, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. Take care of my lambs. Not only do you feed them, feed yung nauna, this now is tend, take care of my lambs. Take care of my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, Son of John, do you love me? Hindi na kaya talaga ni Peter. Again, ha? Deja vu. Yung mga bagay-bagay nagbabalik na lahat-lahat sa isipan ni Pedro. It must have been na nagbabalik na rin pati yung mga pinagsasabi niya. It must have been na nag nagkakaroon na siya ng flashback sa nangyari sa kanya on the night that Jesus got arrested on the night that Jesus was sentenced to die, on the night that he was there with that burning charcoal, with those things, third time na ito, sinabihan siya, you will deny me three times. At ang sinasabi niya talaga, hindi, hindi mangyayari yan. And this one is, and listen, Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Some other writers would like to see that when Jesus said, Do you love me? He uses the love there to be agape. But with all of Peter's reply, we're all Filio, brother, li love. Agape is the highest form of love. But on the third time, when Jesus asked him, Simon, son of John, Jesus met the filio kind of love. Kung hanggang dyan lang kayo ibigay sa akin ng pagmamahal, hindi mo kaya ang agape love, bibigay mo sa akin is filio. Ang tanong sa kanya ng Panginoong Jesus is, do you, ginamit niya yung term, si Peter, filio. Kaya ganun na lamang yung grief na naramdaman ni Peter because it is now the third time marami ng flashbacks. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. Ito pala, verse 18, ayon kay Peter, ayon kay John, is a prophecy. This he said to show by what kind of death he was, Peter, to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. Narinig ko na yung follow me. Iniwanan nila lahat-lahat noon, di ba? And they followed him. Nagtetan sila ng kanilang, ng kanilang net. Nung sabihin sa kanila, follow me and I will make you fishes of men. And they left. The brothers, James and John, they left their dad along with the hired men. Follow me. Oh, 
ang dami naglalaro si Wu sa isipan ni Peter. Ulitin ko yung deja vu para sa kanya. Yung naulit, yung miraculous catch of fish, yung charcoal na burning, I have seen that somewhere doon sa place ng high, high priests. And then, yung do you love me na three times that was asked. Three times also, kagaya nung kanyang uh, pag-deny. And the follow me. Peter has this. <laughs> Just like, you remember him when Jesus walked on water and Peter said, Lord, is that you? And Jesus said, it is I. And he said, if that is you, let me come to you. And so he was about to walk. He take a few steps. And then he has this tendency to turn around or to look at other things. When Jesus told him, follow me, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, John the Beloved, following them. Siguro, habang nag-uusap ang Panginoon at saka si, si Peter para hindi naman mapaya si Peter, they were walking. Could be. Kasi tapos na sila nag-breakfast. They were walking along, along the shore. And because of this, uh, si, si Peter said the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This is the disciple who also had leaned back against him during the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? If I'm going to die, a martyr's death, wherein I will be stretched out, my hands will be stretched out, crucified upside down. What about him? What about this man? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Paki alam mo, Peter. If it is my will, you follow me. So the saying spread abroad among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? So he followed. That is the reinstatement of Peter. And that is, again, another way of telling us that even... After his reinstatement, Peter has really that kind of tendency, looking back. Kagaya din natin siguro. In so many ways, once we decided, there are times that we want to look back and we want to get back to our old self. What gives us self-fulfillment? We wanted to go back to the old self. But Jesus said, follow me. And he followed him. 24 now. This is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things and who has written these things. And we know that his testimony is true. Pinapatunayan ni John that he indeed wrote this fourth gospel. Now there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, ito na, kagaya lang siya ng last na verse ng John chapter 20. I suppose, sabi John, if every one of them will be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that could be written. And then, pwede mo na naman ilagay dyan ulit, but this were written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing in Him you will have life in His name. Ito po ang nilalaman na kabuuan ng John. Ang dami pong magagandang mga bagay-bagay na nilalaman dito. Uh, if you've got questions, please email me. If you've got questions, please 
comment lang po doon. And I will address that when we have the time. If you got things na alam ko pong napakalimitado ng oras natin para sa pag-aaral na ito. But I sure appreciate you mga comments ninyo. And if you've got time, kung ito isang pagpapala sa inyo, if this video has been a blessing to you, please share. Share. And if it will be possible because of internet connection sometimes problem that I'm having. And again, I'm using my son's phone. My, my, my phone really is not doing good. So, please, better subscribe from Cynthia's channel. Again, I would like to thank you for being with me in this study. And I would like to thank you everyone who are in tune, who kept on watching, sharing, commenting, spreading the good news about our Lord. And thank you so much for this OBS. 22. God bless you.